even though we have dealt with force of gravity and acceleration due to gravity before, we're going to move on to a more detail or general, I guess, definition of the force of gravity. Instead of fg equals mg, where g is some given constant, that constant is actually based on the mass that is attracting you as well as your mass and how close you are to those masses. The closer you are, the more attractive force that you have. Multiply by some constant where this constant big G, this doesn't change no matter where you go, is universal. And the units are perfectly arranged so that you will get Newtons for your force. This is the understanding as you know that gravity is the attractive force between things with masses. So you have one mass and two mass and they attract each other. And in the case of one of those mass is being next to a very big mass that doesn't change and also the radius doesn't change. You can see kind of how this lumps together to give me G. And that seems pretty constant. As long as the mass of the bigger body doesn't change and that the distance between you doesn't change significantly. The little bit of motion that you do on Earth, it's only changing your distance to the Earth by much less than a percent, so it's not going to matter in changing your G. However, when you go to different places on the Earth, you do change a little bit your distance to the center of the Earth because the Earth isn't perfectly round. It actually bulges out a little, exaggerated, around the equator like that. So the distance to the center of the Earth is actually a little bit smaller at the North Pole and that's why this number is not 9.8, it's 9.83. So here you are standing, not to scale, standing at the North Pole. There's that R and they give you how far you are from the center of the Earth to you. That's the radius. And our job is to figure out the gap. As you stand here, you're going to feel the attractive force of the Earth, which you will interpret as mg. But really, that force is fg, which is gmm over r squared. Big M being the mass of the Earth. And little m being u, so that cancels out. Rearranging, you can get me is equal to gr squared over big G, then the rest is just plug in numbers. That's in kilometers, so I'm gonna put three zeros in the back. And then you should be done. Quick word about the units because we do have a lot of things going on here. Let's just look at the units a little more carefully. We have meters per second square from my g, little g, and then we have meter square from my r square, and then we have newton. The newton, remember, is f equals ma, so kilogram meters per second square times a meter square all divided by kilogram square. When you divide and divide like that, you're doing a division. So that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's why kilogram square ends up on top. That cancels all that, that cancels all that, that cancels, and you get kilograms in the end as we would expect for the mass of the Earth. The rest, you put in all those numbers and you will get 5.97926 and so on and so forth kilograms, which compares very well with the 5.979 times 10 to 24 kilogram that was given to us as the reference.